Hello, TEDx University of Edinburgh. Oh, I was a bit more panto than I was expecting that to go. But. Hello, how to be okay in the future. I love that. Very realistic, very Scottish, you know? Not how to be incredible in the future, how to be okay. And you know, that links quite nicely to what I'm going to be talking about today eating insects. Now, when people find out I'm a bug muncher, they always ask, <laughs> how are they? And the honest answer, they're OK. <laughs> yeah, they are. I've been farming bugs for a few years now. And over the next five minutes, don't worry, just a short one, I hope to convince some of you, in fact, all of you, to join me. So let's get started. We live in a changing world. Now, I know that's a stock TED opener, but it's true. When my granny was born, there were fewer than 2 billion people on the planet. Now we have over 7 billion. <laughs> She's probably going to kill me for revealing her age to anyone who's arse enough to look it up, but it's a staggering statistic. In her lifetime, global population has more than trebled. And it's not slowing down anytime soon. In the next 12 years, there's projected to be another billion people added to our population. To think about that another way, it's a further 2,000 cities the size of Edinburgh. Unreal. So we need to feed all these people, which means we desperately need to reconsider our food systems to cope with all the increased demand. And most importantly, we need to rethink livestock farming which takes up 70% of agricultural land. Now, that is about 30% of the total land surface of planet Earth. It's an area equivalent to the size of the Americas. Oh, no, it's going that way, isn't it? <laughs> Just to raise the meat we eat. So, let us consider insects as an alternative. Now, I know they're not a household staple here in the UK, but insects are eaten in two-thirds of countries around the world. My organization, Bugs for Life, researches and promotes edible insects in Benin. <laughs> but in Benin, insects can make a vital contribution in the fight against malnutrition. And why is that? Well, first our insects are very nutritious. Not only are they high in protein, but also key micronutrients like vitamin A and iron. Iron, of course, the most common and widespread deficiency across the world and a major cause of hidden hunger. Now, insects also have a much lower environmental impact when compared with traditional livestock. That means they use a lot less water and a lot less food. The standard example is that from 10 kilograms of feed, you'd get just one kilogram of beef, but nine kilograms of crickets. It's an incredible difference. <laughs> so <laughs> they do also don't have the greenhouse gases associated with cattle farming or pig farming. And you can stack them vertically. They can be farmed in high density. <coughs> Try farming cows vertically. A lot more difficult. There's definitely a pat in the head joke in there somewhere. But I'm not going to make it better than that. So insects also are abundant. They're absolutely everywhere. Some of the most successful animal species on the planet. In fact, we already know there are more than 2,000 insect species you can eat. Just think of all those taste sensations waiting to be discovered. Mm-hmm. So, my final point is that, of course, insects are easy to farm, even in cities. And this is my take-home message for you today. You can farm them. I farm them. It's easy. But why would you want to farm insects? Why do you want to become a bug farmer? Right, well, everyone just think back to when you were eight years old. What did you want to be? when you grew up. Exactly. 
Now is your chance. You can do it. <laughs> Just me? <laughs> okay, but you want to know where the meat you eat comes from. Fantastic. You farmed it yourself in your flat, secretly, and you're hoping your landlord or flatmates are not in the audience. <laughs> but you're talking food meters there, not food miles. You also want to know what the meat you ate ate. But after all, whatever is going into it will eventually be going into you. And in case you're interested, I feed mine on organic Scottish oats and fresh vegetable peelings. You want to know that the meat you're eating lived well. High welfare standards, treated well when it was alive, slaughtered humanely. Again, you are the one in control of this. And for those who are interested, you pop them in the freezer. Insects are cold-blooded, so they'll naturally shut down in low temperatures. Keep them in there long enough, they don't come back. <laughs> yeah. So, still not convinced? I, do you know what? I, I think you're with me here, but here's another one. So, from my research in Benin, we realised that one of the things holding people back from this traditional food source was the stigma of others and being seen as uncivilised for eating insects. Now, this is a region where over 50% of children are chronically malnourished. There is very little meat available and few vegetables grow there. So let's remove that stigma and show the world that we're in this together. So I say, farm some bugs. Get to know your food. Invite your friends around for dinner and try out new recipes. Some of my favorites include bug burgers, spaghetti bugganese, or, for a Burns night treat, why not try bug haggis? <laughs> you know, for people who are a bit too squeamish to eat heart and lung. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Importantly, just discuss the importance of your food, where it comes from, and the impact it has on our planet. Now, insects won't be the only way we can improve our food systems. I mean, if everyone was to eat less beef, that would make more of a difference. But here, in the UK, the idea of eating insects really engages us. It captures our imaginations and gets us thinking and talking about the wider issues in food security. And the importance of that cannot be overstated. Thank you, and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>